Good evening, everyone. Ben Haradine here from Cr Cricket Sweden. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the fourth of our seminar short series tonight. Uh, tonight we'll be going into training where you are diving into strength training uh, with uh, none other than strength coach Frederick Nelson. Now a little bit about Frederick Nelson. He won't tell you this, he often doesn't, but he's actually a very, very accomplished musician and drummer, but you'll have to drag that out of him later when you meet him. Uh, Fred is or has been working in the strength industry now uh, for just over five, six years, I think, I believe, and has had some projects with ice hockey, handball, football, working with some of Sweden's elite athletes, uh, helping them plan, program and uh, achieve their strength goals. But most importantly, Fred has been working with Hammerby Friedrot for the past three years as their strength coach and has single-handedly together with coaches transformed their junior club into what, what was last year present, presented with uh, junior club of the year. I'm super excited for tonight's uh, seminar short and I'm hoping that you are too. Please uh, put your virtual hands together <laughs> in welcoming strength coach Freddie Nelson. Over to you mate. Thank you, Ben. Uh, hey guys, even though I can't see you, it's a great pleasure to be able to give this lecture for you. Thank you for that presentation, Ben. Uh, very kind words. Uh, like Ben said, uh, my name is Frederick Nelson. Uh, I've been working uh, for about, like Ben said, five or six years in the strength industry and the latest three or four years with Hama B. Um uh, and helping them develop their strength program. Uh, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so, like I said, really happy uh, to be able to uh, help you guys out and uh, have this lecture for you. And uh, we don't have a lot of time today, so we're going to get started pretty quick. Uh, and uh, if you have any, um, if you have any questions, I'm sure we can dive into them. Uh, maybe not today. Uh, we'll be, uh, I'll be answering some questions, I think, but. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see where we go uh, from there. So, uh, all right, let's get started. Hope you enjoy. Uh, so, the basic thing uh, that we're going to talk about is train where you are. That's the theme uh, of this whole uh, this whole lecture uh, that I got from Ben. So, every one of you guys uh, are have different circumstances. Uh, some of you can train at at a gym. Some of you can train at home. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of different possibilities um, and uh, so what I'm going to do today is present some strategies that I use when I coach and train my athletes, uh, primarily at Hammarby Friidrott and uh, I, hopefully these strategies can work for where you are and regardless of your current situation or your current level of fitness. Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, something that a lot of people have trouble with now, especially during these Corona uh, Corona times. Uh, a lot of people has, uh, have to work uh, work out from home or work out, work out in different conditions. So I'm hoping to be able to help you uh, a few uh, with that. So uh, the agenda for today, uh, if you can slide that up and thank you. Uh, We'll be going through uh, strength and conditioning, what it is, uh, why we need to develop it, uh, what you guys can use from that. Uh, I'm going to go through some strategies for your strength workout, um, and uh, that includes warm up, lower body work, upper body work, core conditioning, and also we'll be touching on working out from home. Uh, my main focus will be uh, will be gym training. But these strategies can be applied to, uh, to, to your home workouts too. It'll be very, very general. Uh, so hopefully in the future, we'll be able to together dive a bit deeper into it. So I hope you can, can see this as a, a very general lecture and uh, to develop some good strategies uh, for yourself in your situation. Uh, so a good start point, a starting point would be to see 
what strength and conditioning is and what the definition is. And there's a lot of different definitions, uh, but I'm going to go through what I use and uh, how I define it. And uh, like I said, there's a lot of different varieties on this. So this is my way of viewing it. And I hope you can uh, you can join me in that. So basically, we're going to talk about strength for athletes because you are athletes and you're competing in a sport. And I usually divide uh, strength up in two, uh, two pieces, uh, and it's general strength and sport specific strength. Uh, so how do we define, uh, define these two areas? Well, uh, uh, if we can take next slide, uh, we have general strength. And I define this as the ability to perform basic movements. And basic movements is, uh, can also be defined in lots of different ways. But in this particular way, we're going to define it as lift, push, and pull. Uh, and that's uh, that's often a definition that we use uh, in strength environments uh, to be able to uh, write programs and uh, and define what we what we want to do uh, when we when we program our strength and what uh, where we want to go. And it's also when we look at uh, basic uh, these basic movements uh, the measurements of these basic movements can vary uh, vary a lot but uh, the uh, the main uh, but there are three main exercises which uh, which a lot of people and a lot of um, uh, a lot of sports use to uh, to measure strength and measure measure your your general strength uh, and that uh, those are, uh, thank you, Ben. Those are the deadlift, the squat, and the bench press. Now, these are not these are not exercises that cover your whole uh, fitness, not in any way. But these are very good benchmark exercises to test your your general fitness, and they're used by a lot of uh, federations and coaches as benchmarks on your fitness level. Uh, like I said, there are many other ways of um, of measuring, but these are like the most common, uh, the common ways to to measure this. Uh, so if we move on to uh, if we define now we defined general strength. So if we go into sport specific strength, this is your uh, my definition of it is your ability to perform movements specific to your sport. For cricket. You have a lot of different and very unique movements that that define what you do. Uh, and sport specific strength is how you develop your ability to to uh, perform those movements. Uh, and also the development of sport specific strength uh, can be done by either training the sport itself, like you do a regular uh, regular cricket session or exercises uh, that are similar or closely connected to those movements. Uh, and that's also, uh, that can also be like working in angles that you, uh, you use uh, on field and uh, basically very, very targeted exercises that can, uh, that can help you uh, get better uh, at cricket. Uh, I mean, if we take an example, no, I mean you can you can deadlift 300 kilos, but that doesn't uh, isn't necessarily going to make you a better cricket player. Uh, you're going to be super strong, but that doesn't mean that your cricket uh, cricket movements will be better. So I hope you I hope you follow me a bit here. So uh, the third part of this is the conditioning part. Thank you, Ben. And the conditioning is uh, defined by the ability of your lungs and your cardiovascular system to uh, produce oxygen basically and uh, this is uh, this is also measured by testing something that's called your vo2 max and your vo2 max uh, is the maximum rate of oxygen your body is able to use during exercise uh, and it's a very good measurement on uh, on your current uh, your current uh, conditioning status. Uh, these uh, your VO2 max can be tested in a uh, is almost always tested in a laboratory environment, 
and that's where you get the most uh, the most specific result or the best result uh, closest to to the truth basically but you can also test this in a number of different ways uh, two of the most common tests for this is the Cooper's test which is a three kilometer run as fast as you can basically and a yo-yo test which i know that your federation uses uh, to test your uh, your stamina and your conditioning uh, these uh, these tests will not be uh, the results of those will not be as exact as an um, uh, as a lab test of your vo2 max but they will come really really close and it's a really good way of testing uh, testing your uh, your uh, conditioning uh, so far so good uh, i hope you uh, i hope you can <laughs> i hope you can follow in the tempo um, i try i'll try to be as as uh, as clear as possible so so everyone understands uh, so one of the major questions is why do we need to develop our general strength and conditioning because we're going to talk about general strength today uh, hopefully uh, like i said in the future we will talk more about the sport specific strength uh, and how we can uh, how we can develop that but this is mainly going to we're going to focus on general strength uh, and some conditioning too uh, and here on the screen you can see uh three different uh, three different categories of why we need to develop that uh, and this is something that i try to implement in my uh, in my training and in uh, when i coach uh, and i try to explain to my athletes how important this really is and the first one is improve your ability to perform key movements uh, this is this is probably the biggest one uh, if you're uh, if you're prepared physically for your sport, cricket is uh, cricket is very demanding physically, uh, more than uh, more so than a lot of people think. Uh, and your uh, uh, your general strength and your general ability uh, to perform your key movements will will enhance your cricket playing a lot. Um, but it's also two other things, which is injury prevention uh, and recovery. Injury prevention is basically what it sounds like. You will be less uh, uh, less prone for injuries if you have uh, if if you have a good functioning muscle system, uh, and basically if you're strong, uh, you'll be able to withstand some of the wear and tear of cricket and other sports, and you'll be able to uh, to perform your sport with uh, with better technique, and that's uh, all of those combined uh, is very very injury preventive, uh, and also your recovery. This also comes very close to uh, close to the conditioning part because it's been shown that uh, athletes who have better a uh, better VO2 max uh, have a lot uh, is way way better at recovering faster than athletes who have a lower VO2 max. Uh, and the, I can't go into the nitpicky details of that, but it's it's very very um, it's a very very general rule nowadays that the better your conditioning are, the uh, shorter your recovery time will be. Uh, so that's extremely important. So now we've gone through a couple of the uh, a couple of the general rules and definitions and now we're going to go into some of the strategies that i use when i program my athletes and and some of the strategies uh, like this like that you can use uh, when you set up your program uh, we won't go very deep into uh, choices of exercise and all of that stuff because that's uh, i want to I want to be uh, for you to be able to use these strategies on your own and and work and create workouts of your own that'll be efficient enough for you uh, to be able to work out in the gym or at home uh, we're going to go into into uh, into the more nitpicky details in the uh, in future sessions uh, and so don't worry about that but this is much more of a general way of looking at it so if you look at the screen, you can see that I have six different uh, six different areas uh, which I use uh, when I program the sessions for my athletes. First one is warm up, uh, and uh, if we go to the next slide, 
Thank you, Ben. Uh, the main the main focus of a warm up is uh, I want it to be pretty short. I want it to be efficient and I want it to uh, to basically get you prepared for the workout that you're going to do. So the first thing I want you to do is get your heart rate up. You can do that by riding a bike, uh, getting on a rower, jogging or whatever. Basically get your heart up and get your temperature up in your body because this will prepare you for the movements that you're going to do. The next phase of the warm up is movement specific. Uh, and like like it says, it's unloaded or light loaded. This is basically dependent on what you're going to do in your session. Are you going to have a heavy lift session? Are you going to have an explosive session? Are you, are you going to have a slow session? It all depends uh, on what uh, what you're going to do. But I want it to be uh, the movements has to be pretty close to what you're going to do. Like if you're going to do squats, for example, uh, you can do air squats, you can do light squats uh, for warm up. So you get so you um, uh, you get your body used to the movements that you're going to do. Uh, and that's basically it. That's what I want. That's a, that's what I want the warm up to be. I don't want it to be too much. I don't need a lot of uh, I don't utilize a lot of stretching or a lot of mobilization. You can do that too. That's totally up to you and what you feel like. But I usually don't do very much of it. Uh, and also remember that this is from a perspective of a healthy athlete with no current injuries. That's really important to to uh, to remember because if you have an injury that you have to work on you might have to modify this you might have to do a longer warm-up you might have to do some mobility or some stretching exercises but so see this as uh, a point where you are uh, injury injury free basically at least at the moment uh, and it'll take between 5 and 15 minutes uh, depending on uh, who you are and what you're going to do uh, but I'll, probably more 15 than 5 but 5 minutes is uh, could also be enough uh, and that's uh, that's basically up to you so if you move on to uh, to the strength session itself uh, i usually start with uh, lower body lower body exercises uh, and i i have a uh, i have a uh, sort of a system that I work uh, that I work through, which is for lower body. Uh, I usually choose uh, one or two multi joint exercises, which I prefer to call main exercises. And these are the exercises I want to be. Uh, I want to be more focused on uh, multi joint means that you use uh, a lot of joints at the same time. Uh, primarily a, a good example would be a, a squat or a deadlift. You move a lot of joints at the same time. These demand usually demand uh, some more technical skill and I want to be I want the athlete to be focused uh, at this time and not too tired uh, from from previous exercises. Uh, next up I uh, try to choose something for the uh, what we call the anterior chain which is the front chain of your body. Uh, Often these exercises tend to be knee, domin uh, knee dominated exercises, which is which could be leg extensions, leg presses, uh, so on and so on. Uh, and these work primarily the anterior uh, part of your body, which is the front. Uh, uh, and I try to uh, I try to utilize at least one exercise uh, with uh, with focus on anterior chain. Uh, next up. I use the uh, I try to target the posterior chain, which is the back chain uh, of your body. Uh, these exercises are often hip uh, hip dominated exercises, which um, like hip thrusts, different vari varieties of deadlifts um, and, and stuff like that. Like you can see uh, uh, the girl on the picture is doing hip thrusts with a uh, with the uh, uh, dumbbell. Uh, so basically she's utilizing uh, utilizing a lot of muscles, but mainly her her posterior chain. Uh, so uh, that usually one or two exercises for the posterior chain. Uh, that's basically what I what I try to do for the lower body. So if we go uh, if we go for we we could check out the example here, which is. Uh, uh, an example of a workout that I could program for my athletes uh, and that would be uh, five sets of five uh, of squats and uh, that would be the main exercise. Uh, hip thrusts, uh, four sets of eight 
uh, for the posterior chain, and three sets of eight leg extensions uh, for the uh, for the anterior. And that's basically it. When you when you've done these uh, when you've done these exercises, you've got a pretty much uh, covered uh, your whole lower body. You can go into specific muscles. You can do exercises that that covers smaller muscle groups and and, and stuff like that. That's totally fine. But if you want a good, uh, pretty quick uh, lower body workout, these three exercises will will cover your bases pretty good. If we move on to upper body, uh, I have uh, a pretty similar pretty similar way of looking at this, but a little bit different still. Uh, when I look at uh, the approach here is to have uh, one pulling exercise, uh, and that usually works the posterior chain, uh, which is the back of your body. This could be uh, chins, different types of rowing exercises. Uh, the what the girl you see on the picture is uh, using a seated row, um, and you, as you can see, she's squeezing uh, she's squeezing her back at the end, and she utilizes the muscles in her back. But it also works her arms pretty good and her core, uh, so that's a pretty good exercise for that. And I try to get at least one pushing exercise, uh, which could be, for example, a bench press, a dumbbell press, or an overhead press. Uh, and that will mainly work your uh, anterior chain, which is the front. Uh, you'll use your chest a lot in the bench press and the dumbbell press. Uh, so I try to get two or three exercises that, that works uh, those things. And uh, uh, an example of this, uh, we can, if we move to on, on to the next slide, uh, would be something like uh, the example there, which is uh, six sets of six uh, bench press and four sets of eight uh, with one-handed dumbbell rows. Uh, that will cover cover pretty much your whole uh, whole upper body. You'll get some back, you'll get some arms, you get some chest. Uh, so it's not not much harder than that. If we move on to the next slide, uh, we go on to the uh, to the core, and. It, one one important thing to remember is that your core is utilized and engaged in basically all your major lifts. So I don't usually program a huge amount of core work for my athletes. And the fact is that squats is probably one of the best core exercises there is. Uh, and it's but it's also very individual how much core work you need. Uh, I usually program core exercises in a circuit with either a time work or a rep based work. And I try to get three components in uh, some kind of rotational exercise like Russian twists or med medicine ball rotations, uh, a contraction extension uh, exercise. I, I like to call them that like crunches or brutal bench or back extensions and one static dynamic uh, exercise, which could be a uh, regular plank or mountain climbers. Uh, and you see in the example that you could program this for rounds, like four rounds of uh, 20 reps of Russian twists, 10 reps of brutal bench and 90 second planche, and then have a bit one or two minutes rest between those rounds. Uh, and uh, just uh, just to clear something out, like all of these exercises that I uh, that I mentioned now, I'm sure you know some of them. If you don't, that's not a problem. Uh, they're uh, only uh, only one googling away <laughs> and you'll be uh, you'll be uh, I think you'll be able to see uh, uh, see this lecture um, afterwards after we've done this I think Ben will facilitate that for you so don't worry if you don't know all the exercises that I'm mentioning uh, if we move forward uh, and also sorry I forgot to mention uh, the core always do your core work at the end of every session because I I want to have your core as fresh as possible during the heavy lifts because you need to utilize your core uh, during those. Uh, and when it comes to conditioning, if I work if I work with athletes who competes in a sport where his or hers endurance isn't the focus point of the performance, uh, a few uh, like a sport where the the endurance is the uh, is the focus point would be long distance runners or rowers or cyclists. Uh, if I if I program for an athlete who doesn't do those kind of sports, I use something called polarized training, 
Uh, and that means basically that your low intensity workouts are very, very low, but longer durations. Uh, and an example like you see, a jog in what I call talking tempo for 50 to 70 minutes, uh, just a slow jog where you can, uh, if you jog with someone, you can still talk to them during the jog. Uh, that's a good way of knowing that you're in a, in a, in a good, uh, good heart rate, um, your heart rate is good. Uh, on the other hand, when you do a high intensity, uh, high intensity training, uh, that would be close to your max effort. Uh, but much, much shorter duration. The example here it would be sitting on a rowing machine, doing 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of um, uh, 20 second pause, do that five times, and then uh, repeat that two, uh, two times, that circuit. That would be a really good uh, intense, uh, intense conditioning workout. And the conditioning, you can put that together with your strength training, that's not a problem, but I recommend that if you want to do it uh, at the same session as your strength training, I would do it uh, as the last, uh, the last thing, um, because it doesn't take a lot of technique, it doesn't take a lot of uh, bracing, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't take a lot of thought basically. So put that it, at the end of your sessions. So if we, if we go forward to the next slide, the, uh, the mostly, Mostly now I've been talking about, uh, been focusing on if you have access to a gym. But if you if you want to work out from home, these strategies can be applied just as much as your on your home workouts as in the gym. It's just a matter of choosing uh, choosing the right exercises. And also one one of the major things that I want you to take away from this is that you need to um, you need to. Uh, put in a lot of effort uh, because that's that's mostly where a lot of people uh, uh, lack when they do home workouts. They don't uh, stimulate their muscles enough. And one way of doing this is working with something that I called uh, reps in reserve. So if we go to the next slide, you can see uh, a, a very, very easy example of if you're doing, for instance, push-ups. Uh, reps in reserve uh, or RIR, is basically what if you do a set and you you do uh, ten reps and you uh, and when you've done uh, when you're done with the set your uh, your feeling is that okay I'm I I think I could do I think I could have done five more reps of this then your RIR uh, number is five and your goal on uh, when working with this should be somewhere around two to four reps in reserve. So say for instance that your first set is a trial set that, that you can feel how much how much you can take. So basically if you do set one is 14 reps uh, and uh, then you uh, 14 reps would be probably uh, and you feel that okay I could have done this is probably where I could have done two or uh, two to three more reps. Next set you're probably a bit tired from your from your first set, so you do uh, you do your set and you do 12 reps, and you stop there. Uh, next set maybe maybe around 12 reps or something like that, and you go on, and you you always you always have your goal to be that you're within this uh, reps in reserve range, so to speak, uh, because this will make you this will make you stimulate your muscles enough. Uh, so that you have a good muscle development over time. Uh, and uh, also this this will allow you to, uh, to, if you use this, you can do four to six set and get enough muscle stimulus to increase your strength. And the, the other good thing with this method is, is, is that it's dynamic and it allows you to go harder when you have a good day and you're feeling very good or lighter when you don't feel as strong as you usually would. And to finish this off, when it comes to exercises and how you choose them, there are so many options. Today, we won't have time to dive very deep into this, but in the future lectures, we will be able to dive deeper into those questions and also try to work around the feedback that we get from you uh, from, from this lecture. Uh, sorry if this was a lot of information at the same time. Uh, yeah, I can understand that it's a lot to take in, but I hope that this has given you some strategies uh, that you can use, whether you're at home or at your gym. And like I said, 
hopefully we'll get to see each other in the future and I'll be able to help you out and, and uh, we can develop your strength uh, together. So uh, basically that's it. I think my half hour is up. Mate, you're not getting away that easily. I have okay. to say, thank you so much. Um, I, I do have a few questions uh, for you uh, that you sure will thing. definitely be able to help us with. The first one being, I know there's a lot of guys and girls out there who are very new to strength training environment or conditioning environment that, you know, experts on the cricket pitch, but this is a game, a, an area of their game that they may or may not have, have uh, capitalized on yet. Yes. And so if I'm one of those people out there in the, in the greater white world, and I want to start tomorrow to do something with my strength training, yep. what, what should I, where should I start? I think the probably the uh, one of the one of the biggest uh, takeaways from the from this lecture uh, if you if you're at that stage in your in your strength training is that uh, your effort your own effort uh, working with this reps in reserve system or whatever makes you uh, put in a hard effort that will help you help you go a long way because you have to have enough muscle stimulus to be able to develop your muscles over, over time. And that means basically overloading, overloading your muscles. Uh, so that's, that's probably the biggest takeaway. Uh, but also I would say, uh, I would say that you, uh, uh, your frequency that you keep, you keep doing it. And when you feel that you, uh, that you have more to push with, you, you do more basically that that your muscles your muscles need that uh, need that to develop that's ba that that's probably the biggest takeaway i would say so even if i've got 15 minutes twice a week to do 100 push ups 100 sit ups and 20 chins yep. um, that's that's a good place for me to or you know 20 air squats that's a good place for me to start i can do that absolutely i mean your workout could be 20 minutes, it could be 90 minutes. You can get a lot out of a workout in 20 minutes. Absolutely. Uh, it all depends on how, how, you, uh, how you do it. Uh, but also if I would maybe recommend to putting, putting at least 60 minutes into, into a workout if you want to work your whole body. Uh, but like I said, you can get a lot out of just doing 20 minutes of really intense stuff twice a week. You're, you'll be you'll be in a you'll be in a really good position if you do that for a couple of months. Awesome. Um, and thinking also a little bit about you mentioned how many times you should do that, and, and I guess it's a lot based on your people's own availability. But I think it's not it's not a limitation of you have to go through, you know, an hour or ninety minute session to get something productive done. You can still do a great deal in a short space of time, but definitely, you know. If, for for those of us who may or may may not be as experienced or inspired to to start, um, do do you have any tips or apps or particular that you tend to be or tend to use to to help people with ideas for training? Or would you be able to put together for us some some potential ideas on like you know easy workouts that we could do at home from a beginner intermediate to a, a little bit more advanced level if you're if you're on an on a pretty uh, pretty beginners level when it comes to this basically what what i would say is uh, whatever you do is going to help you help you develop your strength so don't don't shy away from from uh, basic exercises like the push-ups or the air squats they're great really good uh, of utilizing a lot of muscles and uh, and it, basically what i would say is if you try to keep a frequency of uh, maybe two sessions a week uh, that has been proven to be quite enough to to get some muscle development uh, in diff uh, in different researches so two times a week 60 minutes uh, if you're on uh, depending on of course what level you're on but if you're in a beginner or intermediate at, uh, at strength training this will help you cover a lot uh, a lot of ground uh, if you're if you're going to use, um, there's a lot of resources online, and there's a lot of a uh, lot of ways uh, of of, uh, of utilizing information. 
I think one of the uh, I don't want to make <laughs> too much too much commercial for for uh, for people, but I think that uh, there's two guys that has a podcast called Styrke Labbet, uh, and they have an app called Strength Log, which has a lot of free. If you download that app, it's free. Uh, you can have you can have a. Um, um, you can have a membership and you and unlock uh, a lot of a lot of programs and exercises, but they have a lot of free uh, free programs and free sessions in that. I would definitely recommend using that if you if you don't have a lot of experience. That'll get you going pretty quick, and they have a lot of body weight stuff that you can do at home too. Last question for you, mate. Um, yes. And I know this could be controversial in some ways, but there's so much information out there on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, how do we navigate um, this in the best way for our youngsters that they that they don't get too engrossed in the on the, in the black hole that is that is strength training and and uh, looking good and fit and so forth. Where do you go for to for trusted information? That's a really good question and it's a really tough one too because there's so much information out but uh, I think that you need to you need to be aware of what sources you use. Uh, you need to be uh, not maybe fact checking but uh, if you have uh, if you have like if you have friends that are really into strength training and you know that they get good results and you know that they have uh, that they have a good notion of what what strength training is uh, Ask people around you. That's probably a, a really good, uh, a really good way to start. But if you want to have, if you want to have something, something uh, really, uh, really good, uh, Styrke Labet is a very good, a very good page to uh, to go to. They have a, uh, really good articles and stuff you can read up on. Uh, I I have a few people that I follow on Instagram or or uh, or YouTube that makes uh, good videos, uh, but also try to try to find people with uh, with a lot of experience that have a good track record, uh, and uh, and also people that I I usually I usually look for people that are pretty humble, because if if you look at someone who's who's giving a giving a lecture and he he or she is screaming about uh, extremely a lot of what you shouldn't do or what you should do and this thing is this thing is extremely wrong and this thing is the only right thing to do that might not be the best source for information uh, look for look for humble people good educated people with a good resume and you'll probably be be pretty safe i would say is Super, that a good mate, enough that's, that's very, very good. I put you on the spot there, but uh, thanks yeah. very well. You answered that very well. I think from from our perspective, what would be very helpful is that, you know, f for us, we could utilize you now moving forward just to make sure, you know, that, that there is quality information that is reaching our, our players and our coaches um, and they can come back to you if they have questions. I think that's that's part of the quest that we really want to have, right, is people that are curious and, and if we don't have the answers to point them in the right direction and I, I think that if we could utilize you more often in that space it would be fantastic both for us and for our players and uh, budding budding cricketers coming through but um mate Absolutely. i just wanted to give you one uh, last shout out to where can we where can we find you if if we're looking for you on on socials Oh, on socials, uh, that would be, <laughs> my socials aren't the best, but if you want to follow me on Instagram, uh, I'm Heja Fredrik Nelson, which is not the best if you want to be, <laughs> want to be really hot on Instagram, but uh, I, <laughs> I don't post that much, uh, but uh, if you, if you start following me, I might be, I might have to put up some good information there. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's H-E-J, H-E-J, J A Frederick Nelson uh, on Instagram if you want to follow me. Uh, so ba that's basically it. I'm not very I'm not very good on social media. I don't I absolutely don't dislike it, but uh, I'm just not very uh, <laughs> very active. Uh, but no, I'll, we... I'll try I'll try to be. 